And this is Ken Kreitzer for Sons of the American Legion Radio. And we have a chance to do an interview today with a U.S. Army officer, a graduate of West Point, and a former Army football player we enjoyed watching play for the Black Knights in a very big season. And that is Captain Elijah St. Hilaire. Elijah, how are you today? I'm doing well, and, and thank you for letting me participate. You know, I've been speaking with you for quite some time. You, you kind of watched me grow up as a cadet, so looking forward to this. Well, absolutely. We do tend to tell the story that I first saw you in a scrimmage making a couple of what I would call hustle plays, uh, standing out, and then you earned uh, time with the football team and uh, made some big plays. But, Elijah, why don't we start today? Tell us a little bit. You're back at West Point uh, now. You're on your second assignment at West Point, uh, first working in admission, second uh, working in, in administration. Uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, about what you've been doing coming back to West Point. Yes, yeah, so um, I actually got back here after some time in, at the National Training Center where I did my platoon leader time. I came back in 2020 to serve on the admissions team as a diversity outreach officer, which was awesome. Um, I think the greatest thing is being able to help, you know, uh, aspiring cadets. A lot of them, uh, a lot of the students that I work with now, cadets, uh, see their dreams come true by, you know, applying and getting to West Point. Um, but ultimately, it gave me perspective about, you know, what it's like uh, getting into a, the academy, uh, the rigors and, and the different things that you have to go through to, to actually earn your, earn your spot here at West Point. Um, from that position, I moved on into the operations office. So I currently work as the uh, G3 current operations chief. Um, and again, getting some more perspective about West Point. Uh, a lot about my daily uh, job description, I'd say, is uh, coordinating and syn synchronizing um, the different aspects of USPA and West Point as a whole. Um, so definitely getting a lot, a lot of uh, perspective about the academy and how um, things are ran, you know, all, all the different events that we have each and every day, each month, um, seeing and coordinating those are, uh, it's a very important role. Uh, so I, I try to make sure I don't mess it up, um, but definitely give me a chance to see how the academy um, continues to strive to be great. Well, it speaks very well to you that, th that you've been brought back to your alma mater to work in these two important <laughs> assignments. Now, I remember your commissioning ceremony. On uh, the football building at, at West Point, you had lots of family there. Um, yes. Tell, tell, tell us what did, what was the most important thing you learned in at West Point uh, overall and academically. Yes. Um, so I actually spoke to a candidate about this. So my former candidates, uh, now cadets, you know, frequently come and stop by uh, my office. And yesterday I spoke, sat down, and spoke to one of them. And I think the biggest thing that you learn uh, at West Point is. Uh, that you need to fail to succeed, um, whether it's in the academic program, whether it's in the military program. Uh, sometimes it can be sports. Um, each person has that that one or a couple things that they fail at, um, but those are also the things that make us, you know, the greatest, you know, our, the, the greatest representatives of our, ourselves. You know, so I think one thing I learned here at West Point um, was to definitely always lean on grit and toughness to make it through a problem. Um, and that's most times, you know, nine times out of 10, you can't make it through a problem. You just have to dig deep and get it done. Absolutely. Now, uh, you went to uh, the infantry branch of the Army and went to yes. the basic uh, leadership course and then uh, then airborne. Tell us a little bit about those two uh, training uh, sessions. Uh, so Bullock was, was uh, I think, West Point and prepares you very well, especially for, for infantry. Um, so Bullock or the basic officer's leader course. Um, was really cool because I got to implement a lot of the training that I, I did here at West Point. So they gave us a good foundation and you're able to build on that. Um, whichever branch that you select, you, you build on those, that foundation when you get to your basic officers, officers leaders course. Um, airborne, which is funny enough, so I did jump out of some, some planes. I got five jumps in. Uh, was very interesting. Uh, I used to be afraid of heights, but I had to get rid of that really quick as soon as I got on that plane. Um, but that's again an another school that you got you get to face your fears. I think that's one uh, lesson that you always learn in the army. Is there's something out there that you might not be too comfortable with, um, but pushing yourself to that uncomfortable position is when you learn the most about yourself. So I enjoyed airborne um, and gladly wearing uh, my my airborne uh, tab on, on my on my uniform now. Absolutely. Now you went out to Fort Irwin, uh, the 11th 
armored uh, cavalry regiment and you were a platoon leader. Tell us about that experience. Yes, so um, being a platoon leader, I would say for me so far, one of the most amazing experiences in, in the Army um, at West Point. Again, you're, you're learning, how, you're given a foundation, but to actually execute and, and use the tools that you learn here. Um, so I had some of the greatest soldiers in the world, arguably the best ones uh, in the Army. Um, and, and being a, a platoon leader really taught me about myself um, because you know, everybody just thinks mission focus or training when it comes to the army. Um, but at the end of the day, soldiers are people too. Um, so, you know, life events that are going on, um, you know, sadness, happiness, um, all types of things that you have to deal with. I think being a key, the, the key to being a, a good platoon leader is making sure that you understand all aspects of, of a soldier's life. So um, being able to put myself in that position or be put in that position and, and have that type of effect on my soldiers, I always wanted to be someone that they can reach out to 10 years down the line if they ever needed anything. Uh, so I definitely learned a lot and I'm, I'm thankful for my experience as a platoon leader. Absolutely. And uh, we do some work with ROTC uh, programs uh, around the country. And uh, uh, one of the, and, and the Army uh, receives 5,000 new officers each year from ROTC and also a number from OCS. What is it like to uh, interact uh, and uh, make friends with the, the officers who come in from other uh, commissioning uh, areas of the Army? Yes, so I, I think it's very important. Um, so at Bullock, you know, we, we discussed Bullock a little bit. Uh, you have West Point officers, you have OCS officers, you have ROTC officers. Uh, the greatest thing that you get from each other is diversity and thinking. Um, every commissioning source, you know, is a little bit different from each other. Uh, so being able to be put in one place and then go about your careers throughout the Army um, and just be able to offer those different perspectives is, uh, I think, the greatest thing about having, uh, you know, speaking and working with people from ROTC and OCS. Uh, you know, sometimes they hear things we did at West Point and they're like, man, I can't imagine that. I was still in college during that time. Uh, so we shared some funny stories about the, at the end of the day, we're all here for the same purpose and trying to accomplish the same mission. Uh, so I think, you know, being able to have those different ideas offered up when we're trying to execute a mission or, or just trying to go about our day-to-day -day, um, -day job and roles is, is what's most important. And uh, I, I'm glad to say I have friends from all commissioning sources now. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, one other uh, topic we, we tend to hear, we hear about in discussions at, at West Point is, uh, is working with non-commissioned officers, uh, sergeant majors, and, and uh, uh, and listening, learning, and and uh, working with them. What what was your experience? How did you approach uh, working with the NCOs in in uh, uh, the different areas you've been? Yes, yeah, so I would say even from my time as a cadet, NCOs have have always had a tremendous impact on me. I had uh, two great uh, TAC NCOs, Sergeant First Class Crudup and Sergeant First Class Williams. Still remember them. Um, still talk to them now because they really coached and mentored me. Um, I also had two great platoon sergeants, uh, Sergeant Nelson and, and Sergeant Kearney. Uh, so the biggest thing I would say, especially as a new platoon leader um, coming in, you think you have it all figured out. Those NCOs, you know, uh, have experiences that, that you might have never seen uh, before. So um, working with, with, with NCOs, they're kind of like your left and right hand. You, they, they have a lot of the experience that you might not have, without, a lot of Army knowledge that you might not have. So I always lead on my NCOs to help me make decisions. Um, and, and I was always thankful for them because honestly, sometimes, you know, I'd either be out at training or have to go to a school or something and they're able to run the, the platoon just as efficiently as I was. So, um, you know, having a, a good NCO is like having a good backbone, you know, always someone that you can rely on to accomplish the mission. Um, and then, you know, just soldiers come out, coming up through the ranks Usually they're looking up to NCOs that they wanna that they wanna be like as well. So they're able to help you with that mentorship and guidance um, and experience that you might not have had uh, to, only because you came through a different through, different route into the army. Absolutely. Now we're we're not gonna uh, uh, let you go without asking a little bit about your days playing army football as a oh, kick man. returner and a running back. And uh, you were part of a great moment in army football history and. Uh, December of 2016, the win over Navy that broke the streak. Oh, and uh, uh, I remember uh, just uh, towards the end of the game, having being so nervous that you guys were going to be able to hold on and win that game. 
and you did. Tell us a little bit about your memories of that uh, great moment in Army football history. Oh, man. Uh, I could probably speak for three interviews about that game. Um, but it all came down to, as I'm sure you remember, um, we had a rough season that year. We lost a teammate. Uh, lost two teammates, actually, that year. Uh, Michael Peros died in Ranger School during that summer. Uh, we lost B-Jack to a car accident. Um, so it was a very emotional season for us. You know, all, leading up to that game, um, you know, we always had that on our minds. Uh, so actually being there and, and you know, I think we that lit a fire under us. You know, those major uh, events happen sometimes and, and it light, lights a fire under you. I mean, I think that's what happened that game and that season overall. Uh, actually playing in the game, I, I, I would compare it to playing in the Super Bowl. Uh, being under the lights, able to return kicks in front of 70,000 fans. Um, I couldn't dream of it even when I was in high school. Um, and then actually winning the game, uh, I kind of blacked out at the end of the game. You know, everyone entered the field, families coming. I'm crying because I'm like, man, I can't believe we did it after this long. Um, but it just comes down to, to the Army West Point. Not only the brotherhood on the football team, but the actual, you know, West Point fans and West Point community really supporting us um, and really having to tie in and, and support us like they did. Uh, so after the game, I remember um, <laughs> I remember not even making it back to the locker room because there were so many people on the field. I couldn't push my way through. Um, so it was a very emotional day. Uh, still a memory that plays on in my head each and every day. And I'm thankful for it because uh, I get to tell my kids that I helped break the streak and I got to return some kicks in that game. Absolutely. Uh, that was uh, such a great day and you were part of it. Uh, and uh, I just, I just ask you, the, a couple of weeks later, you went down to the Cotton Bowl and played in the yes. Armed Forces Bowl and you beat yes. North, uh, North Texas uh, on a late play. Tell us a little bit about that one. Yeah, so that was uh, very interesting. So I don't know if you remember, we lost to North Texas earlier in that season. Um, so again, we came in with a chip in our shoulders. I had never, I, I've, I've spoken to friends that have gone to bowl games that played football, but I've never been in a bowl game environment. Uh, so being there, and again, uh, when you play for Army, I feel like it's, you kind of have fans every single place. So they came out, they supported, and I think um, that's overall, like having that uh, support system with us. And, and just like I said, the season that we were having, uh, we were ready to go. Uh, so we were able to get it done, and I, I got a nice bowl ring sitting in my basement now. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, the historic Cotton Bowl Stadium, big crowd, a lot of Army alumni uh, 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 were at that game. Now, I want to mention that uh, you were honored by uh, your high school and community in New Jersey, uh, uh, entering uh, your high school Hall of Fame. Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what that event was like and, and going back home. Yeah, it was uh, very special. So I grew up about an hour away from here, uh, which is crazy because when I was in high school, I, I didn't even have the slightest clue what West Point was. Um, so, you know, seeing it, it kind of came back full circle, being able to go and, and play college football and then be able to go back home last year, be honored in front of friends and family um, to, to where I really learned how to play football. I didn't start playing football until eighth grade when I moved to Palisades Park, in New Jersey. Um, which, which was, you know, new. For, it was a new sport for me. Um, so I was very thankful to be honored by the athletic program in school. Um, and thank you to everyone that made that happen and made it possible. Uh, I, I, I was really thankful for it. Hey, and uh, you've also got a scholarship program, the uh, St. Hilaire Leaders of Tomorrow Scholarship. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yes, so we... I'm all about giving back. So I think it was 2019, uh, I spoke to my dad and I was like, hey, why don't we, you know, create a scholarship foundation that we give back to, to high school? Because, you know, like they gave back to me, being inducting me into the, to, into the Hall of Fame. It's all about seeing that next generation do better than you did. Uh, so we honor, you know, each year we honor at least one student from Palisades Park High School, um, usually an athlete that's not only performing well on the, on, you know, in their sport, you know, whether that's on the field, on the basketball court, um, but also has a commitment to community service um, and is also doing well academically. Uh, so we kind of, to kind of take that West Point full candidate approach uh, to the scholarship, but I think it's very important for someone to be recognized. Um, you know, Palisades Park is a very small school um, and not everybody has the opportunities that, you know, 
either I had or somebody else might have. But I think, you know, even just the smallest amount in, in, in the form of a scholarship can help them, you know, maybe with their books or that first car payment or whatever they might need help with uh, moving on. And I think, you know, it's a token of my appreciation for how well they've done uh, up to that point. That's a tremendous uh, uh, effort to make. And uh, talking uh, with our friend, Captain Elijah St. Hilaire, uh, class of 2017 of the U.S. Military Academy. Uh, what, what does the future hold for you? What, uh, what directions are you looking at? Um, so I, I should be heading out from West Point within the next uh, couple months, which I'll be off to Triple C. And then honestly, I, I'm, I'm, I'm branch detailed. So I'll be going from infantry to signal. And I'm looking forward to learning a new skill set. You know, I, I'm kind of nervous because I haven't been uh, around the communications branch too much. Um, but, you know, like I said, it's, life is about living and learning, failing and succeeding. So I'm looking forward to it. Well, communication, Signal Corps is so vital today. Um, lots of things happening. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, just for our audience who may not know what Triple C is, I know what it is, but explain uh, uh, what that uh, program is. Yes. So Triple C is the Captain's Career Course. Um, as a lieutenant coming out of the academy, you have uh, the basic officer's leader course where you learn your initial training. Uh, that captain's career course takes it, you know, a, a step or two above um, to prepare you for leadership as a company commander and hire. Um, so looking forward to the course and uh, being able to say I, can, I, I got the tools at least to lead a company. <laughs> well, I think the Army's got big plans for you. Uh, it, just to close, maybe a a special moment you've had in, in your service in the U.S. Army that stands out? Um, a special moment. Um, I would say being here in admissions. Uh, last year was very interesting. It was all virtual when I was working in admissions. So being able to literally see kids open an envelope that tells them that their life is about to change, you know, uh, for the better and, and seeing those families and, and students emotional over, you know, a significant piece of paper. I'll say that's kind of been the, uh, one of the highlights of my career so far, working in admissions and being able to change lives. That's a great point. And we're so glad to talk with you and keep oh, up. Thank you. Follow do your career at Army football, being at your commissioning, and then also uh, all the things that you've, hearing what you've done in the Army and seeing you back at uh, West Point. Captain Elijah St. Hilaire from the West Point Thanks. class of 2017. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Ken. It's always great speaking and catching up with you. Uh, great to see you and uh, best wishes from everybody at the American Legion. And this is Ken Kratzer for Sons of the American Legion Radio. Thanks for watching.